Welcome to Faith in Five, a weekly video devotional designed to discuss practical spiritual concepts in five minutes or less. I'm your host, Mark Vandella. So growing up, you'd be hard-pressed to find me anywhere but the baseball diamond. I was always covered in dust, and I was always there, whether it was coaching, playing, or umpiring. And I had this one really unique experience while being an umpire. I used to ump little, real little kids, like the, uh, the machine pitch kind. So there was one guy out on the field, one umpire, and he would show the ball and then feed it into the machine. And I always was behind the plate. Because often these were kids that didn't really know what they were doing. I was head to toe in protective gear because, you know, a machine chucking a ball at you, it's, it's just not very comfortable if you get hit. So I had one kid in front of me who has never caught before in his life. I don't even think he had a real catcher's mitt on his hand. And I caught. So I was kind of teaching him, showing him what to do, how to set up, how to hold his hand out. And he did okay for two to three batters. But then about the, the fourth batter, he stands up. Umpire's out there, puts the ball up, he's ready to put it in the machine, the kid just stands up. So I call timeout really quickly. And this kid starts messing around with his knee. I thought maybe he was hurt, so I asked if he was okay, and he didn't, he didn't answer. He just kept messing around with his knee. And I realized that there was something in his pants. And at this time, I realized that it was the, uh, the, the protective equipment supplied to catchers that's supposed to be in another part of your body, not at your knee, okay? So it wasn't his knee that was the problem. So he gets it, it's sitting here and he thinks he's got this decision to make, right? Like, wh how do I get this out? And unfortunately, he makes the wrong decision. He starts moving the cup down his leg to the bottom of his pants. And when he gets it there, he realizes that the elasticity on his sweatpants were just a little too tight to pull that cup out the bottom. So now he decides without thinking, he reaches his hand all the way down to the bottom and he pulls it out. And he, he actually holds it up like, hey, guys, everybody, fans, coaches, players, it's okay. I got it now. It's in my hand. So he starts trying to, like, reset it right there. And, and I, so I, I kind of escort him off out of the way and take him to the dugout and kind of show him, like, hey, buddy, here's kind of what you do. And it dawns on me, like, why am, why am I doing this, right? Like, there's a coach just right over there who's not helping and knows the kid way better than I do. I look to the stands and I figure, you know, his parents have to be in the stands. What? Why? Why are they not doing? Are they embarrassed? Are they just not? Are they just not active parents? Like, what's going on? Why am I the one doing this, right? And it dawned on me that that sometimes our faith works this way. At least it does for me. Like, th there's a verse actually. Paul kind of admits in Romans, in Romans seven fifteen through sixteen, he says, "I do not understand." what I do. Because what I want to do, I do not do. And what I do, I hate. Okay. And the message version says it a little bit clearer without all the do do in there. Um, so the message version says, what I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way and yet I still act another. And then he goes on to say, it's clear that I need help. It's clear that I need God's instruction for my life to help me out. And so in this instance, in our lives, in our faith journey, I want to use this instance to kind of map that onto our faith lives. In what, what character are you? Like think about your life and where you're at. Are you, are you the kid catching who's got this predicament, who's in front of all these people and doesn't really realize what he's doing? Are you the one that's in the spot that says, ah, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Even if I don't want to do it, I still do it. Is that you right now? Do you need someone else in your life to come around to maybe help you? Like, do you need an umpire? Somebody from church, a good friend, somebody to kind of escort you out of the way and, and help you. Look for a teachable moment and say, hey, here's, here's kind of how that works. Or maybe you're the umpire. Maybe you're the person that, that comes alongside of people. And is that your role? And are you living a life in a way that you, you should be having that role? Like, are you the one that kind of comes along and says, you know what, here's, here's what we're going to do and here's how I can help you. And do you continue to invest in your friends to help them along? Or maybe you are the, the silent observer, like the coach and the parents. You're just on the sidelines watching your friends and thinking they're never going to get it. They're just never going to get it. They're, they're going to continue to screw up. There he goes again. There she goes again, right? Right. I think there's two people that I wouldn't 
mind being in the story? The kid? Because I think we're all there at some point. And the umpire. And I think that we can go back and forth, but the one person I never want to be, and I want to challenge us not to be, is the silent observer. Either go get help if you're the one standing in the middle field making a fool of yourself, or be the person that provides that help. Be the one that comes alongside of people and helps them see how they can live a better life based on the way that you live a better life. Because I was a catcher, I could show this kid. Let your life teach that example. Let your life be the example. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to follow us each week, click here to subscribe. And if you want to take it a little bit further, click here for discussion materials.